Hello everyone and welcome to another video from this series where we all learn from other artists. Today I'm going to talk about having the perfect exposure and thinking about exposure in terms of creating a better and interesting image. The technical aspects of creating uh, a good exposure are fairly easy in my opinion. You have uh, the modern camera that evaluates the scene, you have the histogram and you can look at both of these two uh, technical terms of technical elements and you will decide the perfect exposure. I mean you can have a very easy understanding of how uh, to expose in order to have details in the black and details in the white or details in shadows and details in highlights. It's very easy to look at the histogram and adjust your uh, exposure. But I think what it's much more important is how to think of an exposure, how to plan it in such a way that you get the maximum from a scene right from the start. And to illustrate all this, I'm using five photos from the photographer Michael Melford. So let's start with tip number one. And the first tip that I have is to uh, protect details in the highlights. That is why usually I select my subject to be in uh, the brightest area of an image because it's easier to to have it that that way. And as you can see in this photo from, from for example in this photo from uh, Michael Manford, you see that he protects the highlights. He has details in highlights and the most beautiful thing that you can see in a photo I think is to have details in the highlights and especially I think it's because it's similar to the way we see. I'm not exactly or completely sure that this is the reason but it's beautiful to have details in the highlights and also there's a technical aspect. I noticed that when you try to print a photo that has no details in the highlights, the highlights are purely white the print looks really bad. It's better to have complete blacks in the shadow than to have complete whites in the highlights. If you have the chance, of course, preserve both. But in this first tip, I'm concentrating on preserving the highlights. So this means to expose for the highlights. Now you must be very careful and check your histogram for that. Also is always check the histogram also on uh, the color channels because on many situations especially when you're photographing sunsets or sunrises or flowers that are red the red channel tends to be overexposed even though the histogram the the usual histogram the luminosity histogram if you want it's looking okay so even that it's okay the red channel may be overexposed so make sure you check that just to uh, make completely sure or to be completely sure that your highlights are protected and you have enough details in your highlights. Now tip number two is uh, of course protect your shadows if it's possible. I'm saying this that because the dynamic range of the cameras it's not that big sometimes to have the ability to preserve both the highlights and both the shadows in which case you usually do um, multiple shots and then you combine them into one image which is called HDR but I don't recommend the classical HDR post-processing because it looks really bad. The, um, the purpose of photographing this is to have the ability to control perfectly the shadows and the highlights. Now if you are able to do this then do it and preserve details in the shadows as you uh, see for example in this photo from Michael Melford where you see the beauty of having details in shadows. It's not a completely dark area, it's not an area where you don't see anything. Usually areas that are completely black uh, function as stopping elements and you there are cases when uh, you may want to do this when you have an artistic idea or a concept that you want to express and um, mostly in black and white photography having almost dark areas it's uh, it's pretty acceptable at least in my opinion uh, but again if you have the chance have a little bit of details in the in the really black areas of the image and more details in the shadows and so on now the th the third tip would be to be very careful and not overexpose the scene. This concept of overexposing, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have your highlights blown out. This concept of overexposing uh, a scene, it's referring to creating an exposure that does not relate to what you see in front of you, for example. If you are photographing uh, during night or during blue hour, which is the case in this uh, of this photo from Michael Melford, you 
can overexpose the scene. You can you can make it like it's day, for example. You lose that feeling of blue hour, that feeling uh, that the sun is setting or the sun is uh, going to sunrise. And it's, it's really bad if you do this because the whole idea to photograph a, a landscape is to capture it as best as possible in that particular moment. You don't want to lose the magic. You don't want to lose the reason for which you decided to photograph. Now let's move to tip number four. And this tip I think it's uh, from portrait photography or can also be applied to portrait, to portrait photography. But in landscape photography, if your subject is fairly small, try uh, having a background that it's darker. And usually, for example, if you're photographing um, a detail of a branch like it is in, in this photo, this, uh, this branch, if you search it to be uh, exposed to light or to have an opening above it or to be on the edge of the forest, then you will have a certain exposure for that branch of, um, of the tree. The background that is formed by the trees and the interior of the forest will have another exposure. And usually the difference between these two are pretty big for the sensor to capture details in both of these. And the light will drop off really fast. So this will be in your advantage because you will be able to separate your subject from uh, from the background. Tip number five, which is the final tip of this short video, is to capture motion. So be very open-minded and very uh, careful to what you see around you. If it's windy, try to capture the movement of the wind. If you're photographing a bird that is flying like it's in this photo, capture the kind of the, the sensation of movement in the wings. This particular way to photograph uh, works very well if you have some elements that are sharp. So uh, for example, in the case of, of the bird, the head of the bird is, uh, is in sharp. Uh, in the case of the wind that is blowing, there will be some elements that are going to be sharp. The, the earth, the, the trail, the hills, the clouds, there will be elements that are going to be sharp. Big trees, for example those will not move. So this thing will work better like this. I really hope that these five tips were useful to you and I really hope that you find them interesting and you will decide to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are not already subscribed and make sure to click the bell notification icon to know exactly when I make a new upload. And for all of you that are already subscribed, thanks for watching, thanks for uh, subscribing and thanks for commenting and sharing my work. And for all of you that are watching, it doesn't matter if you're a subscriber or not, uh, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get there. Thanks for watching. I think I said thanks for watching too, my, too many times. I don't know exactly, but bye-bye.